Today, the governor and the board met and kept the cash rate at 2%. So we saw changes in February and also in May of this year. And now again, the governor and the board are basically just waiting to see what happens. The biggest news story at the moment is obviously the Greece story and their default on their loan. And obviously over the weekend they had their uh, referendum which allowed them to vote no, which they did. So this is an interesting time for what's happening in Greece and what's happening to the Euro Union and, and obviously the Euro Dollar. The Euro Dollar is really important for, for countries like Germany, France and the bigger countries who can actually trade off the smaller economies because it brings the euro value down which makes their exports so important in terms of their general GDP and economic activity. So let's get back to Greece. What does it mean for them? Well in, in the grand scheme of things Greece as an economy only is around 242 billion dollars which putting into context is only around half of New South Wales GDP. So in terms of global they're extremely small in regards to that. But the big word you're going to hear soon is this word about contagion. And what does that mean for the actual Euro Union? Are we going to see countries like Spain and Portugal and potentially Italy see what happens with Greece and how they're treated by the EU and then to see, well, OK, if they don't have to pay their debts back, what about us? Maybe we should do the same thing. Now what's interesting on the ground and say Spain is an example is we're starting to see these anti-austerity parties get some momentum. Recently in the May elections in the regional areas we saw some of these regional areas support rise for these anti-austerity uh, parties. Now they've got their major elections in November of this year so they're going to be watching very carefully in terms of what the EU does. The EU will make a decision this week and then they'll be working through that decision. So are they going to throw Greece into the mire and see and let them fend for themselves? Which frankly from my personal opinion is probably the best thing to do for Greece. They need to stand on their own two feet. And what will happen to their economy is they'll obviously suffer significantly for the short term but over the long term it'll mean better. It'll basically recalibrate them, they'll make their wages better. I mean they will be lower wages but in terms of then they'll start to attract some, some um, opportunity in regards to businesses outside of Greece looking to use Greece for their labour force and do some manufacturing and those types of things which again is going to see Greece struggle in the earlier stages but probably for the next five years be very very poor but coming out of that and we saw that happen in Argentina when they also defaulted on their loans as well. You know it's the, it's the recession and, and potentially the depression that they have to have to get themselves back on a level footing to grow themselves. I mean in fact if you actually look at Greece's history they should never have been invited into the EU in the first instance. They were actually hiding a bit of debt thanks to their friends at Goldman Sachs and on Wall Street and we saw that come out in the GFC. So for me I think you know there needs to be a strong hand from the EU. They need to make an example otherwise we will see a contagion effect. Now that will mean potentially that the EU, the dollar, the euro might grow in value because obviously when you don't have these smaller um, lower economically performing economies it will mean that the value of the euro will grow a little bit against uh, global currencies such as the US, the Aussie etc. So that's what's happening over in Europe. In, in, in the grand scheme of things back in Australia we still need to focus on Asia. Asia is our doorstep, we are in the Asian century and China has made some changes in terms of their economic activity and some, they've reduced some of the tight controls that they put on to try and get inflation under control. So what we're seeing in China now is a little bit more stimulus in terms of internal stimulus to try and get the economy to continue to keep growing above that magical 7% GDP number. Um, we're also seeing India starting to have, you know, they're growing. Um, Japan has had a fairly good time of it the last 12 months as well and, and that's a good sign for us. We do a lot of trading, they're, they're historically one of our biggest trading partners, in fact they were our biggest until China arrived on the scene. So they're all good news stories for the Australian economy in terms of how we're poised. Domestically when we look at our economy, sentiment had really improved post-budget 
and we started to see the tax incentives do some heavy lifting and we'll start to see those numbers flow through in the course of the next couple of months in regards to what actually happened with that $20,000 you know, depreciation incentive and write-offs and so forth. Um, generally speaking, the economy's moving okay, a little bit slower than we'd like it. There's still some spare capacity, but as we again move from this, and, and I know this is a re repeating message, but as we move from this activity around the mining capex expenditure, which is now lacking, we are moving into a recovery around construction. And in terms of the housing market and general construction, we're seeing more and more of that occur. Our story over the next decade is going to be a story of immigration and growth in population. Quite frankly, we need to do it. If we don't grow that population, then our GDP will suffer. Our services to Asia are going to be important and our commodity sales up into Asia are going to be critical in terms of seeing our economic prosperity move forward. So it's an interesting time. There's not a lot to report on the cash rate. I suspect the cash rate won't change even in the second half of this year unless we see a deterioration, uh, maybe globally led by the Greece uh, situation or domestically if we don't see some of that capacity and we don't see some business confidence and some business capex expenditure outside of the mining sector and some growth in our manufacturing then we might see one more adjustment but for me I'm still saying interest rates on hold and I would like to think that in 2016 we might start to see rates go a little bit higher but they will be lower for longer as opposed to the long-term historical rates of around seven and eight percent I suspect we're going to be around that five and six percent for a decent period of time until our economy really starts to pick up that spare capacity.